This week on UND Insider Weekly, after 11 seasons, the elusive UND NDSU game is back. Plus, volleyball gets ready to start their season. Soccer comes up just short against North Dakota State, and football heads to San Jose State. Before they head off to their first game of the season, first-year head coach Bubba Schweigert sits down in the coach's corner. Then our one-on-one -on -one interview with two-time Stanley Cup champion Matt Green during his trip here with the biggest trophy in sports. All this week on UND Insider Week. Welcome to a brand new season of UND Insider Weekly. As usual, alongside Tom Miller from the Grand Forks Arrow, Ryan Powell and Paul Ralston from UND, UND Athletics, I'm Tim Hennessy. Gentlemen, a brand new season is upon us. Football started, what, a month or so ago with preseason, and they'll be kicking it off against San Jose State. We'll get to that in a little bit, but a, I think a pertinent announcement last week about NDSU-UND football renewing their rivalry coming up uh, starting next season. Two games uh, a few years apart, both played in Fargo. There's a lot of thoughts along those lines, but I think what we should focus on is the fact that two great rivalries, one of the greatest rivalries in college football, is uh, going to be renewed. And rivalries mean a lot, don't you think? Absolutely. I, you know, you know, growing up watching Keith Jackson calling uh, Florida State Miami as a kid, you know, on a big stage like that, and I know Ryan certainly can share some experiences as well, but but I grew up around this area, so certainly this one, first and foremost, I grew up with it, and I don't care from what side you're on. Uh, it's, it's certainly, it would appear to me, with all the interest in the fan boards and everything else, that uh, even though people are saying, you know, some people are against it restarting, it would that would indicate that that's why it needs to restart, I guess, in my mind. And I think it's a good thing. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think uh, most importantly, it's probably going to be the most fun for the student athletes who get to play in it. Ryan, you would know it. I mean, it, to whichever team wins, in some cases, uh, it doesn't make a difference what they do the rest of the year, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I grew up in Alabama around the Iron Bowl, Auburn, Alabama, and just... Being up here for the last five, six years and working with this football program, that's you want that rivalry game. You want that game that you circle on your calendar and you look forward to. And there's some excitement and just talking to Bubba and how he's handled this. And just to be a Unity football player, they all deserve the chance to play North Dakota State. And I think that's paramount in this whole thing and just giving those guys the opportunity to to experience everything there is to be a UND football player, and that's playing a rival like North Dakota State. Tom, you were about five the last time they played, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> a little older than that. I grew up going to all those games. You know, I'm not going to claim any of the snowballs that hit Rocky Hager, but uh, <laughs> uh, they were just the best games of the year. Everybody uh, it, leading up, just the, the excitement was, uh, was unlike any other week, and uh, it's going to be interesting. It'll be the first game of kind of the, a new era of Division One, a new era of social media, where every fans can interact in good or bad. Um, it, it should be it should be very fun uh, leading up to that game. You know, it's interesting because for many years it was the final game of the season. Now, it's not going to be that, and it really wasn't that for a while before it before it ceased. But if it were the final game of the season, then it takes on a little extra meaning, I guess. But still, just to have that renew, uh, renew that rivalry, get these kids back into a situation where they see this and experience it, I think is the biggest thing. Well, and you, you look at it, when I was younger in the early 90s, my, my father was teaching and coaching out in Garrison, North Dakota. But, okay, so Garrison couldn't be any closer to Grand Forks or Fargo, but it was so fun that week of school, when you're in school, all your classmates, whether they lived on one side of the street or the other, some of them were wearing the green and white, some were wearing green and gold, and you know everybody had a little piece of it basically, and, you know, and everybody was gonna watch it on TV or listen to it on the radio, and so uh, I have a feeling that everything will fall into that just, just like that again, like it was never gone, but it's just, I'm so glad that, that it's back. Next September, folks, NDSU and UND. Let's talk about this version of the UND football team with head coach Bobby Schweiger taking over this year, and Ryan Powell's very close to it. I think probably over there every day. Paul is your sideline uh, reporter on the UND uh, football radio network as well. Uh, I don't know, does anybody know what to expect when this team jumps on the field against San Jose State? I, I know the one thing that Coach Schweiger and his staff have been preaching is just effort, effort, effort. And this group of guys is going to play 60 minutes. There's not going to be any giving up. You know, that's all that they control is their effort. And that's what he wants his guys focused on. And Thursday night's exciting. Like he was here earlier and just talked about you don't know what you're going to get. But it's just that season opener and the good things that come with it and having a new 
staff, new players, just kind of new identity. It should be fun. You've seen UND football and over the years here. Is there any way from preseason, from this, from uh, fall camp and scrimmages or anything to determine what they're going to be like? <laughs> I, it's going to be completely different. Just the styles of offense. The defenses right. have, haven't changed a whole lot. But just that, going back to that kind of power run game and trying to take time off the clock and things like that is going to be a little different than what we've seen the last couple of years where we aired it out a lot. And, so that in itself is going to dictate some different things on Thursday night, too. And Tom and I have been out in practice uh, and visited it a little bit. One of the things I take away is how often the coaching staff, especially Coach Schweigert, will either take one player aside or a group of players while they're running the drill and say, hey, fellas, do you understand what we're doing or why we're doing this? And, and I think that's an excellent way of teaching because, it, you know, it give, gives them a big picture, like, okay, why are we, why are we doing this drill? Why, why does this work? And, and it, you know, it gives them a chance to kind of uh, get every, all the information needed of why they're putting in this or putting in the time on this drill and that drill. What I also think is it very interesting is just how, um, when I've been to practice, just how organized and, you know, everybody kind of sprints to the next thing. When the, when the horn sounds after one segment of practice, they sprint right into the next one and they're into it. There's very little wasted time in a Coach Schweiger practice, which is you know, really encouraging, and everybody's kind of bought into that type Tom, of philosophy. Tom, how important for the player, particularly the players coming back, that there is a definite change, that they're doing things entirely different than they've done in the past. Think that's uh, important for those guys to re-energize them, maybe? Well, uh, you know, absolutely. I think uh, you, you need something to, to grab onto as far as uh, seeing a new vision and a, a new plan moving forward. Um, you know, I'm sure they were, a, you know, a little disappointed with how things went last year, last couple of years. And uh, they need they needed something like you said a new motivation uh, a new direction and um, you know you you definitely whether it's better or worse it's it's certainly different out of Memorial Stadium right now. Ryan, you didn't even get to put out a depth chart until about a week ago. I mean, it, they, they, everybody was fighting for a position coming into fall camp. Every position was basically open. It made it for uh, for some interesting physical competition battles during live scrimmages. It was yeah for sure just the competitiveness of of camp and the only reason that was because all position battles were open it's a new staff they came in right away and were like guys if you had a starting job last year you don't have it this year you have to earn it you have to get it back and that made camp a little more fiery you might say or just a little more intense but it was a good camp and i think they're kind of ready to go into thursday night see what happens well we had a heck of a streak going against north dakota state in all sports uh, last year didn't lose to them uh, basketball and soccer and volleyball but we dropped one but the Matt Kellogg soccer team maybe the fact that it was one to nothing says something about this year's version of the UND soccer team huh? 11 freshmen uh, they're trying to interject a lot of youth and, and see what they can do and I thought uh, by and large I know a veteran NDSU team had some possession in that game but but by and large UND held its own and on the road, you got to play defensive. It was one little clearance mistake that ended up being the difference maker in that, but I think they're building for that Big Sky Conference season. New coach in volleyball as well. Mark Pryor is there. Uh, they start this uh, this coming weekend as well. Can we re expect a repeat of the Big Sky Conference championship? They were picked fourth, I guess. Well, it's, it's a little bit different scenario than when uh, Coach Schweigert was here with all the 30-some new faces he has. Uh, Coach Pryor has a little bit more of a leadership experience in place with that volleyball program. So, um, you know, he doesn't have to deal with that possible major drop off with, with talent leaving here or there. He's got a, he's got a good core to work with. Um, so, I, you know, I'm sure he's brought in a few of his own players with some talent, but uh, there's still going to be some familiar faces he's got there. Well, we'll look forward to see how they do their opening weekend as well. And coming up, they'll face their first true test this weekend as they visit San Jose State. Before they do that, first-year head football coach Bubba Schweiger will sit down in the coach's corner. I started hunting with my brothers and my dad. Hunting for me is getting away from everything, just getting out into the country, to the quiet. I enjoy hunting with my son more than anything. Someday he'll have memories like I have of hunting with my dad. There's just no better feeling when a customer says, you know, that gun you sold me last year worked perfect. That is, to me, what it's all about. I'm Leon Streifel, and I'm one of the hunting experts at Shields. 
City's Area Transit, we go where you go. Did you know that riding the city bus is free for UND and Northland students? I ride the bus so I don't have to find a parking spot, and then I'm always within an easy walking distance to all of my classes. I'm going green, so I ride my bike everywhere. But when the weather turns bad, I take the bus. And why not? It's free. City's Area Transit, enjoy the ride. New head coach Bubba Schweiger and North Dakota football take on Robert Morris in the 49th Annual Potato Bowl, Saturday, September 6th at 6 p.m. in the Alaris Center. Get your tickets today at the Alaris Center box office or undsports.com. Inside these lines, nobody hits harder. Nobody digs faster. Nobody plays stronger. Inside these lines, we defend our Big Sky Championship. Watch North Dakota Volleyball begin its title defense against Tulane and South Dakota September 5th and 6th, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Join North Dakota Volleyball at the UND Volleyball Classic. Attention kids 8th grade and younger. You can now register to be a North Dakota Junior Champion for free. That's right, get a free membership to the official kids club of UND Athletics just by registering in person at any U.S. bank location in North Dakota or the Red River Valley. Membership includes a Junior Champions t-shirt, free admission to over 60 UND home games, exclusive Junior Champions events, and more. Sign up today for free at any U.S. bank location in North Dakota or the Red River Valley and be a North Dakota Junior Champion. UND Insider Weekly is sponsored by Shields and Grand Forks Cities Area Transit. After a month of training camp, the regular season has finally arrived for UND football. And before they take off to San Jose and San Jose State, Coach Bubba Schweiger is nice enough to give us some time here in the Coach's Corner. Bubba, thanks for being with us and welcome to the program. It's good to be here. You'll tell all your family and friends about the show, I'm guessing, won't you? Um, I'll make sure I do that. <laughs> <laughs> a month of training camp under your belt already. Uh, has, I, I'm guessing for you and your staff in particular, it's flown by, maybe not so much for the players. Huh? Yeah, it does go pretty fast. I know we reported on July 31st, and with the new NCAA rules that were put in effect a few years ago, you know, you have one practice a day the first five days, and then it's two and one and two and one. But there's enough time to get ready. Uh, it extends the camp a bit, but uh, our guys have had a good camp and put forth good effort, so we feel like we're ready to go. You have uh, talked your mantra all along has been day to day, day by day. Try not to get ahead of yourselves a little bit, and that's a teaching process each day, I would guess. Yeah, we really wanted to focus on that for our guys, so we were focusing on the task at hand, whether it was installing the offense or defense and special teams. You know, we really didn't talk a whole lot about our, our opponent in fall camp and uh, the first day that we did that was on Saturday you know we roughly a week before the game and just didn't want to get ahead of ourselves and we needed to still learn our offense our defense and and our special teams and not be too concerned about the opponent. There have been times when the defensive structure at UND the, the playbook if you want to call it that has been pretty tough it's been pretty intricate where uh, I remember coaches in the past saying we needed some brilliant guys or bright guys to be able to to be able to go through this defense. Have you simplified things a little bit on both sides of the ball, particularly on defense? Well, I think the longer that we've been running the defense, we've been able to simplify it for the players. And this year with a lot of new guys, we had to be uh, cognizant of that fact and uh, put in as much as we can handle and scale back if we need to for the game. So we've try, tried to simplify it over the years, but even in this fall camp, we've tried to make it as simple as possible for us to understand, but we still want to do what we do. So there's a challenge there, but uh, you sure can't uh, run it if the players don't feel comfortable and aren't able to play fast. Offensively, been some challenges there too with uh, you know new guys and first year players that we're gonna have on the field. So we're throwing enough at them that, they, that we can handle. And uh, if we have to scale back a bit, that's just the, the right thing to do. Now at, uh, at Southern Illinois and Duluth, you've been a part of a couple staffs that are you know seeing guys for the first time. Uh, do you learn a lot of new things in that first game when the lights come on about guys? Oh, you sure do, Tom. I think uh, 
you know, until you actually get against the opponents and uh, the game situations, game like with a crowd there watching, uh, we don't really know what we're going to get. And we hopefully we have prepared well enough and we've tried to put our guys in pressure situations in practice. And we've tried to put our guys in a lot of different situations that they need to make adjustments. But it's nothing like the real thing. So we're going to have to take a look at that. And uh, Thursday night, that'll be important to see how we react to those situations. And, and we do know we're going to see some things we haven't prepared for. So that'll be the challenge for us to make those adjustments during the game. It's a tough opponent. You start with obviously San Jose State and it's on the road and everything else. But kind of, does that set up the way you, I mean, obviously they're tough, but maybe this is a good way to start in some respects? Yeah, it's a good challenge. Our guys are excited. Um, you know, we, we go into this game and really focused on our performance and, uh, you know, the real competitors are going to really rise up with this situation. We know they're going to run very well. We know that they have a lot of talent, you know, being an FBS opponent. Uh, they're going to have a lot of talent and maybe a little bit more depth than, than we do, but uh, we're excited about the challenge, and this should bring out the best in our guys as far as our competitive spirit, and, and that's what we're looking for, to see, hey, which team is going to really compete hard. We want to we wanna have play with more heart and desire than our opponent. That's a challenge for our guys. When you play it, an opponent like this, it's basically if you don't beat yourself, you got a chance, right? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, after being at Southern for six years, uh, you can... Really, uh, everybody's going to have those first game mistakes and you want to limit them and have as few as you can. And uh, if you have a number of them that get you into trouble and give them a short field, it obviously makes it much more difficult. And uh, the one thing is early in the game, uh, adjusting to the speed and the pace of the game will be a challenge for us. And we hopefully prepared for those uh, situations. But yes, you just can't make mistakes in these games. You got to, you know, limit the turnovers, limit the penalties, and that gives you a much better chance. You can be as nervous as anybody before that kickoff? It'll be exciting. I hope I'm not nerves. <laughs> I think if you don't feel the nerves and the butterflies, you're, you're not in it for the right reasons. But I've uh, been doing this a long time. Hopefully we can calm down as a coaching staff and calm down as a head coach and be ready to go. Well, we travel safe. Thanks for this. Appreciate it. And good luck uh, against San Jose State. Thank you. We're looking forward to it. Coach Bobby Schweiger, first-year head football coach at UND. And you can watch that game, by the way, Thursday night at 9 o'clock on ESPN3. Still to come, the biggest trophy in sports. And he has hoisted it a couple of times now. My one-on-one -on -one interview with Matt Green is coming up next. City's Area Transit, we go where you go. Did you know that riding the city bus is free for UND and Northland students? I ride the bus so I don't have to find a parking spot, and then I'm always within an easy walking distance to all of my classes. I'm going green, so I ride my bike everywhere. But when the weather turns bad, I take the bus. And why not? It's free. City's Area Transit, enjoy the ride. I started hunting with my brothers and my dad. Hunting for me is getting away from everything, just getting out into the country, to the quiet. I enjoy hunting with my son more than anything. Someday he'll have memories like I have of hunting with my dad. There's just no better feeling when a customer says, you know that gun you sold me last year worked perfect. That is to me what it's all about. I'm Leon Streifel and I'm one of the hunting experts at Shields. Attention kids 8th grade and younger. You can now register to be a North Dakota Junior Champion for free. That's right, get a free membership to the official kids club of UND Athletics just by registering in person at any U.S. bank location in North Dakota or the Red River Valley. Membership includes a Junior Champions t-shirt, free admission to over 60 UND home games, exclusive Junior Champions events, and more. Sign up today for free at any U.S. bank location in North Dakota or the Red River Valley and be a North Dakota Junior Champion. We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself, genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them, values and hard work, giving your best and giving back, working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. September 2nd through the 6th starts the 49th Annual Potato Bowl Week. For a full list of events, go to potatobowl.org.
Well, after three years playing here at UND, Matt Green went on to pursue his dream of playing in the National Hockey League. And after winning a second Stanley Cup championship in just three years, Mr. Green returned to Grand Forks with the hardware in hand. During his visit, I got a chance to sit down with the current LA King and talk about his journey from UND to the NHL. Matt, first of all, thanks for sitting down with us. Uh, really busy time for you, obviously, this summer. And taking time away from, I'm sure, extensive workouts to uh, to bring the Stanley Cup to to Grand Forks. First of all, congratulations on the victory. Two out of three years, that in your wildest dreams, would you ever imagine something like that? No, real, real fortunate, real lucky to, to be able to you know, have that kind of success in the last uh, last three years, and it's, it's been a good run. You've been to three finals. It's uh, and a lot of guys never get to one, right? Yeah. And it, it, what kind of an experience is that as a player to go through something like that? We, we see it and we can kind of see the intense intensity and everything else, but there's no way for us to feel it. What's it like? Oh, it's an unbelievable feeling. It's, uh, it's awesome. You know that a lot of teams, a lot of things have to go right for you to get there. And uh, a lot of luck's involved, but at the same time too, when you're, when you're playing for, for the big prize at the end of the day, it's a, it's a really cool feeling to be able to get into a seven game series. It's, uh, it's, it's indescribable. You, uh, you really get a chance to know your opponents really well, and it's it's a lot of fun. Matt, why Grand Forks? With the uh, cup, I love it here. This is uh, this is second home. I think Grand Ledge is real real dear to my heart. I grew up there, and then uh, Grand Forks. I think is, is a place is very special for me. A lot of friends here, a lot of family here, and and uh, it's this, this is I wouldn't be in the situation where I am today without uh, without my time at UND. You've said that many times about the growth that you experienced coming to North Dakota in the three years that you played with Coach Blaze and Coach mm -hmm. Hackstall. Can you talk about that a little bit and just uh, what you what you mean by that? It's it, it's unbelievable. I uh, I met Hack when I was when I was I think 16 years old, and uh, he's recruited me to play in Sioux City, and he's the reason that I'm here at UND, and uh, and then to be able to play under Blazer for two years, and I think you just it's you're held accountable at all times. It's a high level of respect. They always respected their players and what they're going to do, but also they held you accountable and they made sure that you you knew that you had a job to do and and. Uh, and they, they made you accountable. They made you grow up a little bit. And it was I, I needed that, and I think uh, I benefited for, a lot from it. And that's why my relationship with uh, with Hack is, is I think as strong as it is because I I owe him and uh, and Brad Berry and, and uh, the whole program a lot of for for where I am today for you know making me grow up a little bit. Great experiences uh, here in, in Grand Forks and at Ralph Engelstad Arena. What uh, what would you? I'm sure you've been asked it a million times, but what's your fondest memory of, of playing here? Uh, winning the Monoton Cup, I think, uh, my sophomore year. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun being able to hoist that trophy on home ice. That was awesome. And then just uh, all the games. The games are great. I mean, it's from the best, best atmosphere I've, I've played in front of. I mean, fans are so passionate. The crowd's awesome. And uh, just relationships that you build on the ice. I think that's the, the special thing. It's not one game in particular, but it's... You know, playing with some of your best friends and uh, doing it night after night is uh, it's really special. And I'll never forget that. Talk about one of my favorite experiences. One of the most humorous things I've ever seen in a hockey game was Minnesota State Mankato with Coach Blaze. Yeah. You'd taken several penalties the previous night. He told you you take any penalties the next night, go right to the locker room. You took one, you went right to the locker room and left everybody standing on the ice. Talk about that a little bit, would you? But, uh, Blazer told me if I take one more penalty, I was done. And uh, I think a guy stepped on my stick and I got a tripping penalty. So I was, uh, went right off the ice and on the way out, I uh, two-handed my, my stick across the door frame. And then I got Mark Pullman's coming on to grab me. And he, uh, he yeah, you got to serve the penalty. So I go back out there and I don't have a stick. And the referee looks at me and goes, you need a stick. So I, Tyler Palmasino sitting right next to the bench. So I rip his out of his hand. It's the wrong hand. It comes out to about right here on me. I go over and serve the penalty with that stick. Came out. I think the puck went right by me. I could have had a breakaway, but I got the wrong hand stick. And then I uh, went right back out across the ice, gave, gave Palmo a stick back, and then went right back to the locker room. Matt, three, uh, two Stanley Cups in three years. Uh, congratulations on that. What a, what a run for you. And how long have you, you played? Over 500 games now. How long can you go? I, I don't know. Hopefully, as long as I can. You can't do it anymore uh, you know, once you're done. So hopefully play for as long as I can to get another, get another few good years here and uh, see, what, see what comes next. I hope that luck that you said you need a little bit of to yeah. win a cup. Hope that luck stays with you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for this, Matt. Appreciate it. Absolutely. UND Insider members can watch the entire interview online at UNDSports.com. And coming up after a whole summer off, this panel is prepped and ready to tell us what they're looking forward to this year.
UND Insider Weekly is sponsored by Shields and Grand Forks Cities Area Transit. Head coach Bubba Schweigert and North Dakota football take on Robert Morris in the 49th Annual Potato Bowl, Saturday, September 6th at 6 p.m. in the Alaris Center. Get your tickets today at the Alaris Center box office or undsports.com. Inside these lines, nobody hits harder. Nobody digs faster. Nobody plays stronger. Inside these lines, we defend our Big Sky Championship. Watch North Dakota Volleyball begin its title defense against Tulane and South Dakota September 5th and 6th, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Join North Dakota Volleyball at the UND Volleyball Classic. Welcome back to Insider Weekly. Let's find out what these guys are looking forward to the most in the upcoming. Let's go a whole season. Any sport, guys, Tom? Uh, I'll go with football. Uh, Bubba Schweiger trying to turn around uh, UND's presence in the Big Sky Conference, trying to get up into the likes of Eastern Washington, Montana. It um, be interesting to see how, how fast and how well he's able to, uh, to get that ship righted a little bit. Ryan, he took football from you. So. I, I echo his sentiments in the, <laughs> on the gridiron, but I, I'll go with the men's basketball program coming off some good, strong finishes in the Big Sky their first two seasons. We lose those seniors who the Betty fans had to get so used to seeing out there, Troy Huff, Aaron Anderson, Jamal Webb, Josh Schuler. I could go on and on. But the guys they're bringing in, they're excited about, and they think that there's just not going to be a drop-off there. So I think that's what I'm kind of looking forward to the most. You took your basketball, Paul. What are you going to do? He did. I will <laughs> echo both those uh, previous things, but I will add in volleyball. Uh, Coach Pryor uh, certainly – when you look at uh, some of the returners that he has that he can rely on, Lauren Clark, uh, Mackenzie Hart, the Langdon native, uh, you know, he's got Lexi Robinson, Anna Piaski. Uh, obviously, the question is middle right now for, for Coach Pryor, and we'll see how those t that position evolves through the season, but I'm really excited about this year's edition of UND Volleyball. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see just what happens with uh, new coaches, Bobby Schweigert in football, of course, and Mark Pryor in volleyball, and looking forward to see what uh, what the women's basketball team can do after they put set the bar pretty doggone high last, uh, last year for sure. That'll do it for our first edition of the season. Join us next week for a brand new Insider Weekly. The episode premieres next Wednesday at 8 p.m. on UNDsports.com. Also Fridays at 5 p.m. on Midco Sports Network.